I'm Coy Jandro here with The Real Rejects, and I'm sitting down with two of the directors of X-Men 97, Emmy Unamira and Chase Conley. How you doing today, folks? Good, good. I watch your channel. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I uh, my favorite reaction videos, so that's cool. I'm honored in advance. Already my favorite interview. It's such a weird, horrible risk <laughs> of like celebrating X Men and not knowing who's on the other lens, and then realizing it's all us just celebrating the X Men together on the internet. Mm -hmm. Right? We're all Speaking famous. Of that background, uh, immaculate work. I'm uh, I'm personally 57 issues from every X Men run in print, uh, and then I have a complete run since the beginning. So I I love to see it. Oh man, that's impressive. I admire it. We're close. We're close. That said, I do want to dive in right at the top. Um, I love how this utilized comic lore in a way that would kind of mislead diehard fans and also make casual fans feel like they were in a way in on the joke. Like the Operation Zero Tolerance mislead, in my opinion, the Onslaught mislead. How conscious was that? And were there any arcs that you found particularly inspiring thematically you didn't use in the show? Oh, man. Way to come in with a hard question. No, that's wonderful. I mean, you know, what's mm -hmm. what's great is that this is such a collaborative process. And, you know, we're still working with Marvel. You know, it's like sometimes we'll get ideas and we'll take it in a direction. And it's really all up to the writers. You know, the writers really just lay a lot of wonderful groundwork for us. And then as fans, we get to kind of just add to it and go, well, if you're going to do that arc, I would love to see this. You know, it's all it's all teamwork. And then at the end of the day, because we are also dealing in a modern age where everyone's going to look at everything microscopically, it's kind of like, well, well, then why not bait some things in just to keep people guessing? Because it's fun. I enjoy the speculation as a fan, you know, so I think it's just it's great to kind of get people thinking and wondering. And also, I heard that the comic sales went up. So if we can even just put it back and support the comics, I love that. I love that people are going to jump into it. It's great. And you guys sold out that X Men '97 comic like every week it dropped. That that book sold out everywhere. And I, I thank you for getting comic fans back in comic stores. Uh, Chase, I got to know you helped board one of the most iconic comic things. I wouldn't even say intros. I just think in comic books, the X Men opening is probably the most iconic singular moment in media outside of comics. What was it like adding to something so historic like that? Well, it's cool. It's cool, but it is a slightly slightly terrifying. I mean, you know, one the the most amazing thing that we had uh, an opportunity to uh, to do was to work with Larry Houston, who boarded and directed the original intro sequence, right? And not only that, he was able to bring in his storyboards on paper that were just chilling in his garage, like 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 magic, magic these magic items. You know what I mean? Um, that he brought in, he brought into the studio, and we've got a chance to see some of the shots that mainly because we were able to rotate, you know, things in and out of the 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 lineup uh, as far as like the little vignettes that we showed, things that he was not able to put in because of time and or things where his intent was different from what he got back from the actual vendor. So we were able to kind of embellish on those things. Like one of the main shots was when Rogue throws the Sentinel. Uh, you know, when whenever the, the the tentacles grab her and she tosses him, essentially that was supposed to be one camera move. But they the, the studio overseas just made it into two shots without his consent, you know, and they were just trying to get it done. So he was so we were like, well, we'll do that for you. You know, so being able to do that and, and honestly um, just kind of honor his legacy because he's a legend. So, you know, and, and then also the, the beauty of being able to rotate those things for episode specific uh, things for you to look for. You know, we we love Easter eggs and it just shows our attention to detail and turn to like tea and stuff up for later. So yeah, it was, it's an amazing experience for sure. And, and you've seen our reactions. We love that opening of like, who's going to be there, who's going to not. And we also, I think that'll be really good for where I assume season two is going as far as deciding who's in what episode and teasing right at the top what timeline you're in. And I, it's such a genius use of something so important to us. Uh, and then on the other side, Emmy, I love your work, not just here, but also you're a part of some of my favorite DC animated stuff, like Batman versus Turtles. I adore. I think it's my favorite DC animated thing. You work with Constantine, who I think is the most slept on comic character. Like, I, I just appreciate your love for everything comic. Is there anything from the big two that you would either like to adapt yourself or as a fan want to see adapted that hasn't been yet? Oh, man. I mean, oh, that's so hard because there's so many. And what I'm really enjoying is that actually in this like modern age, we are getting a lot because hmm. I'm really also just a, I'm a huge Vertigo fan. You know, like I love Preacher. I love Sandman. And the fact that, okay, we've got those now. That's awesome. I would always love to just continue doing animation. I think animation is just one of the coolest mediums to work with. 
And if I could just keep jumping into those worlds and get my hands on them, I mean, I'm also, I'm always going to be a huge Batman fan. I mean, look at this guy. That if I could, you know, it's it's fun boarding on those, but if I ever got my hands on it as a director, I think I would just go absolutely insane and probably hopefully in a good way. As far as storylines go, I think I would jump on almost anything because I think what's fun about being a creative storyteller is then honoring the source material but then finding ways to just find the love what's the point of this what story are we kind of trying to tell here and i just i love kind of getting to put my own little stink on it in that sense while still honoring it and you know i'm a, I'm a cubert school graduate so comics are always going to be in my guts so especially with the cuberts so you feel the cuber love here especially i love how long they've been part of the x-men family and how it feels like the show and that brings me to the next question i i have writers like Claremont and Morrison and those arcs feel like them and then you've got artists like Joe Mad and Jim Lee and Silvestri that are so unique from this timeline you're adapting but since they're so unique how do you play the equalizer and the levels to make it fit your show while dealing with such disparate creators back in their original source well I think the key is just what their intent was because it is it's easy to really kind of the only difficulty in that is like is is probably the aspect ratio so it was mainly about trying to figure out what the intent was but as, as far as like sequential storytelling goes, why they chose this shot and try to figure out how to translate that panel pacing. You know, um, there's a lot of time paneling, if you're thinking about comics, I mean, they even function like pans, you know, when you have like long vertical panels, especially if there are things that are that are, are revealed and towards the bottom of a page, you know, what you, you learn in the, like, what's it, the Scott McCloud how to draw comic yeah. book. I think I think I still have a copy of that somewhere. Why? So yeah, it really it really is about um it really is about that in, in terms of just making sure we figure out what that intent is. And then, you know, we supplement those moments with more modern cinematography in order to just kind of ground it and make sure that it's cinematic so that when we build to that shot, that it feels iconic like a big splash page would would feel. And, you know, styles aside they're still human mm. characters, right? So as long as we're kind of translating that, and I think because we work in animation, we have the tool and the medium to be able to maximize on the same things that each one of those individual artists can maximize on, especially as far as it goes with like perspective, force perspective and stuff like that. It's not going to break uh, your immersion. It mm. have a very super stylized shot because... It's full of stylized shots, but we just try to make sure that it's not gratuitous in the same way that you would with a splash page that you're building to it because a splash page has no impact if every page is a splash page, right? And we yeah. storytelling in the same in the same way. So if everything's an Avengers level event, nothing is. I love that. And it shows, man. You guys made the space between the panels absolutely sing, and that's the art of reading a comic. And I really appreciate it. A couple more questions. I know uh, your time is limited with the glory of this finale, but spoiler warning for the finale, and we'll put a visual up, so I promise uh, they'll know. But with the, the end of this being such deep cut references, I did not expect to ever hear a Scotty son or anything of that world reference or a feral Wolverine actually translate. Is there anything you want people to read between season one and season two that would help enhance their experience, much like having certain knowledge going into this would? If we both make this face. The Kevin Feige snipers are on you. Yeah. Isn't you know, see this like red dot right here. <laughs> you know, I always want to encourage people to just go ahead and read the comics anyway, because we're fans of the comics and it's like, and there's just so much out there. It's like, yeah, you could probably do a quick Google search and find what, what issues are linked to these storylines. But I'm also a person who just enjoys the ride. And so, you know, I, while I don't really want to give people homework, like I know kind of happens, I, I really hope that because the, even the original animated series did adaptations, but in different ways, I kind of yeah. hope that while, while we are basing it off of, you know, comic book storylines, we are going to do kind of our own flavor. So there is, a, there is a little bit of prep that you guys could do, but also maybe just enjoy and see what we're going to bring you. You know, have fun. I love that answer because it's absolutely how it feels. Well, this show is honestly, and I don't say this in a hyperbolic way or it not meaning as much as it means. It is, I think, not only my favorite representation of the X-Men, but I also think now my favorite animated series adapting my favorite medium. Thank you. I grew up with these characters. Oh, that means a lot. Read with them. Thank you so, so much. So truly what you've made, the love is all there. So thank you. Seeing Kitty Pride at the very end, I, I just, there's so much potential and I really appreciate the detail you guys put in. Thank you so much. Recording stopped. Amazing team.
Oh, I, I we'll keep talking to them so they know too. I'll keep yelling it from rooftops. Such a pleasure yeah, to meet you both. Sure. I appreciate it. Likewise, thank, thank you. I'll check out your review, your your watch down of the finale. I seriously watch you every every I I watch your reaction. I'm not just buttering you up. I watch your reaction before I watch the episode just to see what you two. <laughs> Oh, that's, it, I'm it, so it honored. on my algorithm in the morning when I turn my TV on, I turn, go to YouTube. Dude, this one was by far the most, uh, like, sounds not found in nature, I think I admitted, during, like, certain key sequences. <laughs> and then we talked for as long as the episode after. So you you did the work, and I really appreciate you both and everyone else. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have appreciate a great one, guys. You. Enjoy some downtime. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs>